Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session of Met Related Pep Talk. And in today's session, I'll be taking you through some simple time series analysis with Python programming language. And specifically, we'll be looking at how to use the XRA package. And then we'll also use the PyMonkey DAO 2 for trend and then slope assessment. Um, I wouldn't take the focus of this video onto the spatial plots, but then for the next video, I'll look at how to do spatial plots and then spatial analysis in general. So we start off by first, um, if you haven't got XRE installed, you, I mean, okay, well, I'm using the spider environment. That's the spider ideally. So you can just search for Anaconda, install Anaconda and then run spider from there. And I think at the moment of, at the point of recording this video, the recent version of Spider is Spider 4. So um, it has a nice interface. You would love it. But then I'm using Spider 3. And so if you haven't installed the XRE, what you do is to type pip install XRE. I have it already installed, so no need to run. If you, have it, if you haven't got it installed, just issue this command and enter. It will give you, it would install the XRE. And then we do same for the PyMan Kendall. And that should install the PyMan Kendall. All right. Now, after finishing with all the installations, what we need to do here is to import the packages we are using. So if I'm going to use XRE, I import XRE. Because I don't want to be typing XRE all the time because it's very long. I will just abbreviate it. I just use something to denote it. So this is Excel. And then I also import NumPy because I'll make use of this for the numerical um, things I'll need to do. So I import numerical Python as NP. Then I also import PyMan Kendall as PMK. And then my script would be in the same location as my file, the netcdf file I'm working with. So I've called this netcdf file as my in file. And you can see that I ignored all the path. I just looked at the final file name because this file is in the same location as my Python script. All right, so with this done, we start off with reading the netcdf dataset. So let me call data. I assign the variable data, or I read the data from the netcdf file and then assign it to the variable data. And to read that, we imported XR, so we call xr.read, sorry, xr.open dataset. And then we open the dataset in file. Okay, now I run just this part. Spider allows me to run selection, so I just run the selection. Okay, well, I didn't run everything, so let's start from the top. Run through everything. Okay, so we have everything working well. And then from there, we can look at the components of or what data the data contains. So data dot data underscore vars. So it tells me it contains the temperature and then the station. So which is the station identifier. And then the temperature is just the average temperature. And all these data sets are varying over time, latitude, and longitude. All right. Now we want to make use of just a temp data. So let's call this data to use. And we call that from our data. So we need the temp from the data. Now the temp would be in single or double quotes if it's in this structure. Now alternatively you can also do this data underscore to use equals to data dot tmp. Now if you're using the dot tmp instead of the square brackets then there's no need for single or double quotes on the variable name. All right so I'm sticking to the first one. All right so with this, it means we now have called only the TMP. So if I issue the data to use, 
see that it contains only long last time and then the variable CMP as shown here, which is the average temperature, which is the near surface temperature quoted in degrees Celsius. All right. So we start off first by selecting a point location. Now to comment in, for single line comments in Python, we use the hash sign. So single line selection. So what we do is um, selecting a location. So single line selection, call this SLS. And then I'm selecting from the data to use. So dot cell, and then I indicate what I'm selecting. So I'm selecting a longitude and then a latitude, which is a fixed point. So the longitude is a single value, latitude is a single value. So long, longitude here will be, let's say, um, 0 0.5. Well, I'm using this is 0 0.5 east. That's east is to the right, so positive. If it had been west, that would be negative. And then lat here, let's say 7.5. That's the latitude. Now, there's a tendency that the data set I'm using, which is a crude data set, wouldn't be split exactly on the 0.5s. So what I need to do is to attach also an interpolation method so that if that point is not directly noticed, it would pick the nearest point to it. So I indicate here method and nearest. So if you use the nearest interpolation method, to select that location for me. So once I do this and I run it, I have my SLS for a point. So if I search for it, if I just enter SLS on the console, see, it would produce just a point. Okay, so we just have the time component. The latitude is a point, longitude is a point. Okay, so now we can plot this, which is a time series for a point. So we can just issue SLS.plot and that is enough to give us a time series. Now bear in mind the data is already a monthly data set. So this is enough to give us a monthly time series for the fixed point. So that is it. Now, the next step is to do an area, real selection and averaging. So, Let's call this area, area selection and averaging. Okay, so we call it from the same data to use. Then dot cell to select, and we call the long. Now I'm going to make use of the numpy here by selecting a range of values. So np dot a range, and then a range of negative one point five to one point five all in steps of 0 0.5. So that means if you increase in steps of 0 0.5, then the latitude also of NP.A range from let's say five to 12 or let's say 15 in steps of 0 0.5. And after that, I'll still include the method here for same reasons as we gave before. So method nearest. Okay. So let me expand this part a bit. So I run this and that should give us the aerial selection. Now to give us the aerial averaging, let me average this same point. So I'm averaging and then equating it back to the same variable so that I will just overwrite it. So we call the ASA, bear in mind, if we search for ASA here or we input ASA here, it will give us the temperature varying on time, latitude, and longitude. But once a field, we want to have an average for the entire area. So we are going to find the mean here again. And then the dimension will be our longitude and then our latitude. But bear in mind, those should also be in brackets. All right. So we run this part. And then when we are done, we can plot the time series. Okay, so let's allow it to be done running. 
and from there we plot the time series. Okay, it's done. So we plot the time series from here, and then that's a time series for the region or the area we selected. Okay, now the next step is to do an annual averaging. So annual averaging. Because we want to um, fine tune the data and then just see the annual information or the annual time series. I'm going to use the same aerial averaging because we've already um, collapsed it into its field mean. So to do this, we define a new variable, let's say annual average to be equal to we call our ASA, that's the aerial selection and averaging that we did. And then we are now going to group it. So we do a group by, <coughs> sorry. So we do a group by here. And bear in mind, the data had a component called time. So we group by the time dot year to give us GLE um, groupings. And then from there, you find the average over the time. All right, so this is enough to give us a yearly average, okay. So now we can find, we can just plot our yearly average. And that's the annual time series, okay. All right, then we look at the very final thing for today, which is, trying to find a trend and then some statistics in our time series, which is in this case, our more time series. So, sorry. So this part has to do with the statistics of the data. So, what we're doing here is to, we've already averaged the annual data. So what we do is to just call start results and equate it to the PyMank and that we imported as PMK. Okay, so PMK. Now on the PyMank and DAO page, under PyPy, there's a whole documentation that should help you understand it. And then all the seasonal trend tests and then the rest, all the different types of trends, assessments or monkey and that test you can do. But for now, I'm just using the basic one, which is original test. So pmk.original test. And then we run that on the annual average. Okay. And once we run this, gives us the statistics. So I can just, on the editor, I would have to bring the print from and see what it contains. So print that result. However, if I were to be on the console, which I'll try, I'll do that for you to see. If I run it on the console, I don't need, I don't necessarily need a print. So with this, I get all the statistics over here telling me that there's an increasing trend in the data which we all can see and then it gives us the slope to be about 0 0.007 degrees celsius per year so it means um for every year with all things being equal we are experiencing temperature increase of 0 0.007 and this is for the period of 1901 to 2018 and then there are also other statistics, the significance of the trend and so on and so forth. All right. Now, as a bonus or a final thing, we can also do the seasonal assessment. So seasonal climatology. At the moment, we just want to see the climatological value. Okay, that's like for all the seasons. So to do that, we can go back to, uh, we can use the annual averaging, we can use, um, no, I think the annual averaging wouldn't be the best here. So we need one that contains the monthly information. So 
we can go back to the aerial selection, which contained the monthly information before we change it into annual in this step. So what we do is to create a new variable, let's call this seasonal averaging, and equate that to our aerial selection. And again, we would group our data sets. So we group by, and here we are grouping by the season, so time dot season. And then after so that, we average along the time. Okay. And this is enough to give us the seasonal climatological values. Since we are not looking at, for this video, we are not focusing on spatial information. Right. So we can just print our seasonal averaging and see what it contains. Okay, so this tells us, so for DGF, that is the temperature, the climatological mean or the temperature for DGF over the entire period. This is for June, July, August. So it has been arranged in alphabetical order based on the starting letters of the seasons. Okay. And we have March, April, May with its climatological value. And then September, October, November with its climatological value. And all these are quoted in degrees Celsius. All right, so thank you for your time. Your attention is really much appreciated. Hope you go try your hands on it. If you have any questions, ask them in the comment sections. And then if you have something you want us to address, just ask it in the comment section. The team is prepared to address it in subsequent videos. Have a wonderful time and be great at coding. Thank you.